Hello, and we are back. This is Dr. Yusef Nizigi. He is a rheumatologist and clinical researcher at NYU. We are focusing today on osteoarthritis and the prevalence of it right now. Yes, so osteoarthritis is the unspoken major arthritis that we have. It is the most common form of arthritis. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the U.S., the numbers are estimated to be about 25 to 30 million patients, wow. and worldwide it's over 250 million patients. So it's very common. It, of course, has certain risk factors as aging and uh, damage to the joints, trauma, uh, being overweight, which are all increasing in prevalence in the population. We are getting older. A larger proportion of the population is getting older, and uh, also a larger proportion of the population is getting heavier too. So those numbers are expected to increase in the next upcoming decades. Do you see any children, younger children or in their teens with OA? So it's a rare condition for children. Sometimes certain birth defects and joint damage that happens around early in childhood can then manifest itself as early osteoarthritis. In young athletes and in children in early teens, if they have injury, especially to their knees and hips, a sports injury type of injury, then that will accelerate osteoarthritis. So instead of the average age being in the 60s, mm -hmm. those patients tend to get it earlier in their 40s at times. I see. And so let's talk about some of the treatments that are out there today. So unfortunately, the current state of osteoarthritis treatment is mostly symptom relief. Right. Everything we have from anti-inflammatories, pain medications such as Tylenol, or narcotic pain medications, mm -hmm. or steroid injections into the knee, or hyaluronic acid derivatives that are also injected right. in the knee, are all uh, trying to help relieve the pain. Mm -hmm. uh, problem with them is they're not long-term solutions, and uh, they have to be repeated. Uh, or in the case of tablets, they have to be used daily or at least some, some regular frequency to control the pain because none of the current remedies we have actually try to or are able to solve the underlying problem, which is the damage that's happening to the joint, the inflammation, the swelling, and the further damage that comes from that. So it's, we don't change the natural course of the disease, but we do try to help our patients with the symptoms. Unfortunately, still a lot of patients down the road will require joint replacement surgery because we don't have anything that stops or reverses the damage that's happening to the joints. That's already done. There's yes, okay. unfortunately. So once the damage is done, that's it. That's unfortunately, it. surgery is the only way to remedy that. Okay, and what sort of studies might patients be most interested in right now? Um, so it's uh, this ACR meeting especially. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, several new uh, molecules and pathways that are looking at potentially creating disease-modifying drugs for osteoarthritis. And none of these have been approved yet. They're in different phases of development, but at least the data that's being presented here is promising. And uh, along with that, there are also uh, drugs that have been uh, studied for signs and symptoms relief. Mm -hmm. So better pain medications, safer pain medications. They, some of these do not have the disease-modifying component, but they are potentially better for uh, uh, controlling pain. So as a patient, uh, what I would focus on is, of course, yes, we do need better pain medications, mm -hmm. but the real goal is drugs that really change the damage that happens to the joint itself, slow it down, stop it, or potentially reverse it. I think that would be the, that's what happened with other types of arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. Psoriatic arthritis. Those patients over the last 20 years, the drugs that were developed for those types of arthritis have really improved patient life, stopped damage from happening, and a lot of patients go into remission. So they're like as if they don't have the disease when they're in remission. They need Correct. to be on drug, but it's it's a normal life. We don't have that for osteoarthritis yet, so those will be the things I'd be looking for. But that's something we can look forward to. Hopefully. Um, and what parts of aspects, uh, or excuse me, abstracts and posters are most important for us to pay attention to right now? Um, so I would divide it into two major things. Great. Um, first of all, the types of patients that are studied is important because we want to be able to identify when we look at it in the methods section, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, patients that are the most common types. Like, for example, if you have an injection, uh, well, it, the more relevant patient type is the one that has an joint arthritis in one knee, let's say for example, because that's the one that's being injected. Right. You want that to improve. 
you don't expect other parts of the body to improve. So that's something that needs to pay attention to. Second is disease modification right now is of course structure improvement, either slowing down, stopping or improving. So we have to look at the, we can't open up and look at it. So we have to use imaging modalities. Mm -hmm. And the one that's most commonly used and kind of is the accepted gold standard is x-rays. Mm -hmm. Now more and more uh, people are looking at MRIs. Mm -hmm. So at least attention should be paid to what kind of imaging was done, how much improvement was seen there, because sometimes you can see improvements. Yeah, it looks like an improvement, but it might be very small. So you, when you pay attention to the joint space increase or bone area decrease and all of those, we really have to look at what was used and how much the difference was because that will then hopefully translate into improvements in signs and symptoms where at least in some of the presentations at this meeting, it looks some of these are promising that the improvement in the structure is actually potentially associated with improvement in both pain and function, which are the main signs and symptoms that I've studied in yes, these studies. Yes, it would be completely debilitating when your my um, husband has a torn ACL, so he struggles every day, he physical therapy, um, but the pain, it changes his personality when, when he is in, in pain, so it's something that I am Personally, yeah, aware, I'm of, aware of, of and, and, yeah. no, no, that's the, and it that's became the from basketball when he was younger. So, yes, so that's the most common young person yes. and then getting maybe potential arthritis early mm -hmm. on his trauma. And uh, uh, what we really want is the pain is bad enough. Then there are studies that show the functional impairment coming from the pain or because you don't have the full activity of the joint anymore right. actually seems to be a risk factor for work disability, potentially mortality overall when you look at groups because when you're not active, we know that's a risk factor for coronary artery disease, mm -hmm. for example. So the same thing, it becomes a risk factor for other diseases, mm -hmm. other comorbid conditions. Sure. So then physical therapy becomes very important, how we take care of the joint after it's uh, healed, for example, when the ligament tear, tendon tear repairs, we have to be careful what we're doing next because more number of tears and traumas, of course, it gets harder and harder to heal and there's more sequelae left and more functional potentially impairment left. Mm -hmm. So it's not just drugs, but it's also lifestyle-wise. Yes. We really have to we have these joints. We need to take care of them. Uh, that's exercise, of course, everybody recommends it, but it's not just for heart disease or things like that. For the joints, it's very important. Yes. It helps keep the weight off. That's also important for the joints. He is thin as a rail. I have to encourage him to eat. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, so he doesn't have that. You know. then. <laughs> but it's just, it's important just to consider the whole joint sure. and joint health and not just the drugs. Hopefully we're going to have drugs. Yes. It looks like there are several that are being developed that can potentially not just control the pain, but also improve the structure of the joint. And what drugs are you most excited about? What are you looking forward to? Um, so there are a couple, uh, if we start with the pain related ones. Please. So there was a recently approved, uh, it's a corticosteroid injected into the knee. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem so far with corticosteroids has been that they're short lived. Mm -hmm. And yes. then the repeat injections also seem to, the literature suggests damages the cartilage. So you don't want to do it all the time, but it does help with the signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. The newly approved one, and they have some uh, data here too is a uh, it's a, a new method of combining the cell with these micro spheres which seems to expand the, uh, the effect time so instead of just a couple of weeks you can they show data out to three months or so you might need potentially less uh, steroid injection which is an improvement I think. Yes, absolutely. Um, there are the what's called the uh, nerve growth factor inhibitors so what they do is there's they are not injected into the joint but they're injected systemically, so it's a sub-Q mm -hmm. injection, which seem to block the pain transmission. And they're still being de developed. There have been some issues and they slowed down and they started up again, but there are two of them that are presenting data, but those are also just for pain. And then uh, there's another intraarticular injection that's being developed that's also presented here is capsaicin, which is what we use as topical right. over the counter. Yes. But this is a different version of it that seems to have both three months and six months uh, pain relief after a single injection when injected into the affected joint. So those are, I think, the ones to watch out for as far as pain control. These really haven't shown any effect on disease modification in the cartilage regrowth and things like that. Then there's a second group which uh, has a couple also candidates which they are trying to 
beat disease modifying. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of them is uh, this uh, drug that's approved in Korea called Imosa, which takes... Can you say it one more time just so we get in, it? In Bosa. In Bosa. And uh, it's approved in Korea for signs and symptoms. However, in their studies, what they're doing is they're taking, taking cartilage cells, treating them, and I won't go into the details of it, but then they're injected into the joint, and they are doing studies to now show, and they have preliminary evidence that potentially maybe some of the cartilage lesions can be healing. So they're still early on, and they're, they're also doing US studies now. Great. After Korea, so that's one of the uh, things to watch out for. There's another um, uh, growth factor as they call spreferment which is injected into the knee again, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to, this mode of action is supposed to be in, inducing cartilage to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are presenting data here where they looked at MRI images of uh, uh, patients, and they saw some slowing down and potentially small increases in uh, cartilage thickness, which is potentially promising. Uh, they didn't really show, at least as part of this study, uh, effect on signs and symptoms. Uh, so that's, of course, the ideal would be if you showed both the cartilage and the signs and symptoms, but these are early studies and further studies are ongoing. Uh, there's another molecule. So one of the things that happens in osteoarthritis is the, because of the nature of the disease, the cartilage, there are uh, proteins that are secreted, enzymes, that also break down the leftover existing cartilage. So right. there's not only the whole trauma part of it. This drug, uh, catepsin, is against is t tries to fight the breakdown of the cartilage. Tries to that's a tab tablet. It's a systemic drug, mm -hmm. and they also show uh, slowing down of because as the cartilage wears out, bone appears underneath. So what they looked at in MRI is there was also slowing down of this process. So that's potentially a disease modifying pathway. Um, Unfortunately, they also do not show a lot of effect on signs and symptoms at this time. Right. But as I said, these are early promising molecules. More studies will need to be done, but I think we should keep an eye on them. And the final one is the one that we've been working on also, which is an injection into the knee. Uh, is a small molecule wind inhibitor. Wind pathway is implicated in osteoarthritis, both cartilage loss and damage and inflammation. And we finished a phase two study, that's what we're presenting, where we showed, especially unilateral patients, mm -hmm. so it's a single injection yes. also, it was able to improve the joint space, which is a surrogate for cartilage yes. growth, and also was uh, helpful in uh, both controlling pain and improving function. So that's also promising, kind of, th those are the things you want to hit when you want to be a disease modifying Absolutely. drug. But all of these are, I mean, we've never had as many osteoarthritis potential disease modifying drugs or signs and symptom drugs at a rheumatology meeting that I remember and I was talking to others. Everybody is very excited that these new and potentially very helpful drugs yes. are up and coming. I'm excited. And uh, I mean, yeah, yes. so I think I think that after rheumatoid arthritis and then the seronegative arthritis mm -hmm. that are up and uh, going now, I think osteoarthritis might be the next the wave new. where we see new drugs, which are a lot needed because there are 10 times more patients with osteoarthritis. And it's extremely than debilitating. Yes, it is. Yes. yes, it is. And it's not, we're only talking about knee also at this time yeah, exactly. because that's the most common one. Mm. But the small joints of the hands, yes. the thumb, the hip, shoulder, ankles, sure. all of these joints are have osteoarthritis. Yes. And hip surgeries are the second most surgeries after knee surgeries, replacement mm -hmm. surgeries. And uh, so there is a lot of patients that can be helped potentially. And it sounds like we have a lot to look forward to. I think so, yes. I think so. It's, it'll be an interesting next several years yes. as these, all of these potential molecules go through their development programs and see what comes to life. And the good thing might be that there might be different types of patients benefiting from different types of drugs. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to find that out too. And then we'll be, I think hopefully we can deliver something that's really disease changing to our osteoarthritis patients. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, and, and thank, thank you, you for much. all the work that you're doing to help increase the quality of life of patients. Thank you very much. Much so, appreciated. So nice thank to meet you very you. much. Thank you. And that's what we have for today. We will be taking a brief break, two minute break, and we will be right back.